What's up guys, Dr. Jared here, Tone and Titan, and these are the best exercises to alleviate rotator cuff shoulder pain, often referred to as rotator cuff tendonitis. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as shoulder impingement. Now, as the name implies, impingement means that there's something being pinched in the shoulder. In this case, most of the time, it's our supraspinatus tendon. That's one of the rotator cuff muscles. You'll see on my model here that our shoulder actually has a roof over the top of it. That's our AC joint. This is the supraspinatus tendon right here, right on top of the ball or the head of our humerus. What happens is there are some things that can occur where that tendon actually gets pinched right underneath that roof right there. The two most common causes of this are poor posture. If you slouch and round forward, that brings the roof down closer to the top of that tendon and that can cause that pinching. Or the other thing is rotator cuff weakness. Your rotator cuff are all these muscles that wrap around the head of the humerus right here. Their job is to hold the ball down out of that space. And so what we can do is if we address posture with the right exercises, that brings the roof up a little bit higher, brings the AC joint up higher. And then if we address the rotator cuff, and specifically if we show you the right rotator cuff strengthening exercises, that's gonna hold this ball or the head of the humerus down out of that space. And so that's exactly what you're gonna get with this video. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite stretches to correct your posture and bring your shoulders in a more correct position. And then some of my favorite rotator cuff strengthening exercises so that your shoulder functions better. That's the benefit that you're gonna get. Hope this is helpful. First exercise coming at you right now. This first stretch is probably my favorite one and it takes place right here in a doorway. Okay, I know this is a squat rack, but at home you're going to do these in a doorway. This is a doorway stretch. I like to do this in three different positions. So what you're going to do is stand in your doorway, and first thing, we're gonna keep our hands nice and low. So you're gonna put your hands right down here low on either sides of your door frame, and then take a big step through the door. Put your weight onto that front foot just until you get a good stretch through the front of your chest, through the front of your shoulders. Take it to a comfortable position and you're gonna hold it there for about 20 to 30 seconds. Now most people with impingement love that one just because the way that tendon runs, you really feel it pull and stretch kind of right through that front of the shoulder right there, right where that tendon is at fault. And so again, you're gonna hold that for about 20 to 30 seconds and then you can repeat that up to three times. Then let's go up a little bit higher. So now I want you to put your hands at about shoulder level, but keep your elbows down. And then this is the next position. Same thing, we're just gonna put our weight onto that front foot. Really good posture, just until we get a good stretch through the front of the chest on that one. I like to hold that one for about 20 to 30 seconds. And again, you can repeat that two to three times. And then finally, this one's maybe a little more compromising for your shoulder. Not everybody loves this one, but those who do really like this one, that's where we're gonna put our hands even up a little higher. So put your hands up about head level, and then you're going to lean in through that doorway as well. Again, if this is painful, I don't want you to do it, but if it's okay, if it feels all right, that's a great stretch for those areas that are affected. Same parameters on this one. We're gonna hold for 20 to 30 seconds, and then we're gonna repeat that three times. This second stretch is one of my favorites because it is very effective, and we can also make it functional with some motion but it does require the use of a foam roller. This is a 36 inch medium density foam roller. It's long enough and it's a little bit more comfortable. If you don't have one of these or don't have access to one, I've got one linked in the description down below so you can check that out. But this is what the stretch looks like. What you're going to do is actually lay down on the foam roller. And so I'm gonna put it under my tailbone and then just lay the length of my spine. And again, this is why the longer length comes into play is because you can get your entire spine supported on it. And honestly, if I were to just lay right here with palms up and just let gravity stretch all through my chest and all through the front of my shoulders, that's actually a pretty good stretch. That's where I like to start most people. If that feels okay, what we can do is then progress that by raising your hands up to the side, so kind of more of like a T, kind of outstretched arm position. Now the weight of my arms is actually pulling down more. You can feel even more of a stretch through the front of the chest, through the front of the shoulders. And again, you're just gonna let gravity do its thing right there. I usually tell people, let's lay there for 30 to 60 seconds. If it feels good, you can lay there for longer than that, but at least that amount of time. 
Phase three that I like to pay, take people through on this would be to add again some dynamic motion to it. So you're gonna start right here with your, arm, with your arms at your side and then we're gonna raise them up and then all the way overhead as high as you can comfortably take them and then return right back down to that starting position. So it looks just like that up here at the top. Should be a good stretch, should feel that in your upper back, should feel that through your chest, through your shoulders. Hold it for about three to five seconds and then you're gonna come right back down. And again, the same parameter applies on this. I usually just set like a 60 second or even like a two minute timer in my clinic and just let the, then just let the patient go for that amount of time. Again, just going for a good stretch all through the shoulders, all through the chest. Now that we've worked on your posture, you're standing up a little straighter and a little taller, let's introduce some strengthening exercises. The first exercise that I love to take people through is called a scapular pinch. This is great for the muscles that control your shoulder blade as well as your external rotators. What you're gonna do is stand up really straight and tall, good posture, keep your elbows at a 90 degree angle and tucked right into your side. Now what we're going to do is pull our hands apart, reach kind of back behind you as far as you can take your hands, but what I really want you to feel are your shoulder blades pulling together and then pulling down. I tell people try to tuck your shoulder blades down into your back pockets. We're gonna hold it there one, two, three seconds and then return back to that starting position. Again, a great exercise for your posture. We're introducing a little activation to the rotator cuff with this. You can do it anywhere, no equipment required. We're gonna hold one, two, three and then return back to the starting position. Three sets of 10 or about one set of 30 is a great number to shoot for. Next, let's focus a little more specifically on that rotator cuff. My four favorite exercises to do that at home are A's, T's, Y's, and W's. And basically, if I were to do this with my arms, that kind of looks like an A, that looks like a T, up there looks like a Y, and then that kind of looks like a W. We're going to do each one of those motions. I'm gonna do them on the edge of my treatment table. At home, you can do them on the edge of a bed. Edge of a couch is a little bit lower, Typically, I recommend bed. That's kind of the best place for you to do these. You're gonna lay down on your bed with your affected arm hanging off. Now let's do the A's. What we're going to do is keep your arm nice and straight and then reach back behind you. I want your hand to go up as high as it can. I want it to at least clear the table right here and then right back down. And so we come up, we hold one, two, three, and then right back down. You should feel this right in the back of your shoulder. And then we're gonna do this about 10 times. If that feels okay, let's go for the T's. T's are gonna be again, straight arm. We're gonna pull it out to the side, thumb up here at the top if you can, and then return right back down to that starting position. You feel that still on the back of the shoulder, maybe in a little bit different spot. Those are definitely your rotator cuff muscles going crazy as you're doing that. And um, again, about 10 reps is what we shoot for. And then let's get into the Y's. Y's are gonna be right up here, thumb up as we pull up and again, up above the table, up above your bed if you can. And then we're gonna return to the starting position. So up and hold, one, two, three, and then right back down. And we're gonna do about 10 of those. And then the last exercise is gonna be the W's. From right here, I'm gonna bend my elbow and then put my basically thumbs up just like this, thumb all the way up to the ceiling as high as I can, and then right back down. Feels very similar to the scap pinch, but I like this one because it's actually against gravity. There's a little more resistance appreciated with this. And you definitely should feel that right on the back of your shoulder. Those are your rotator cuff muscles doing all of those motions. So about 10 repetitions here is what we shoot for. And then if those all feel okay, do two sets of 10, and if that feels okay, three sets of 10 is eventually what I like to work up to. Finally, these last two exercises, we're going to strengthen and isolate our rotator cuff, but now we're going to add resistance to it. And so the resistance that I'm going to go with is this resistance tubing or this resistance band. If you don't have one of these, you can also use the cable machine at the gym, works really well. Or if you're interested in picking one of these up for home, I've also got the set that I use linked in the description down below. So you can check that out as well. So right here, I always like to get started with some external rotation. You're gonna stand, my right shoulder is the affected shoulder in this case. I'm gonna stand with my elbow at a 90 degree, really good upright posture. I'm going to keep my elbow tucked right into my side as I pull the back of my hand out towards the wall on the other side right over there. Hold one, two, three at the end and then nice and slow right back to the starting position. And so again, we're gonna pull and hold one, two, three 
three and then right back. What you should feel on this is right on the back of your shoulder, and that's where those rotator cuff muscles, you've got three muscles that are going to externally rotate your shoulder. That's where I want you to feel this, is right up there, right on the back of your shoulder. And what I tell people is let's go for about 10 to 15 reps in that direction. And then what you can do is turn around. And so, well, you would turn around. I'll show you this way so you don't have to look at my back. This is what internal rotation looks like. And so now I'm using my left hand, but again, you would just turn around and still use that same hand. Internal rotation, you're gonna keep that elbow at that same 90 degree, but now our starting position is with the band out to the side right here really good posture and then you're going to pull right across your body hold one two three and then return right back to that starting position so it looks just like this this one you're going to feel in a little bit different spot most people feel this one right in here on the front of the shoulder the thing that i like to mention with this internal rotation exercise is it's important but not quite as important as the external rotation exercise we don't want you to get strong and tight and kind of collapse in this way we want to promote that upright posture and that external rotation motion so typically what i tell people is i want you to do twice as many external rotation sets as you do internal rotation sets and again about three sets of 10 three sets of 15 is a great number to shoot for of course if you're interested in more help with your rotator cuff pain check out this video right here this one's going to help you if you have trouble sleeping with your shoulder pain this is a great one right here to check out if you haven't subscribed to tone and tighten yet hit the circle right here to do that and i hope to see you again soon